Hi everyone and welcome to Tuesday's Tips with Kimber Bell. My name is Laurie and today we are going to talk all about Annika's throw pillows. Now these throw pillows are amazing. I just love them. So first of all, I'm gonna show you a few of them so you can see what the designs kind of look like in real life. And this right here, this is our medium size and this is our large size. Aren't these beautiful? So this one has a Chanel look to it and this one is an applique and we're gonna talk a little bit more about the Chanel and the applique in just a minute. But first I wanted to show you, this is the small pillow, isn't it beautiful? Now what I love about these three pillows is these are made in different size hoops, but this is the coolest part. They're made in different hoopings. So if you were to hoop this, you just hoop uh, and stitch it out and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. It goes really quick and you can make these pillows any shape or size that you want. Uh, the instructions would show you, for example, this is our chevron, chenille. You can do this in six hoopings. Or if you want to make it a little bit larger, you can do it in more hoopings and maybe make it twice as long. Let's say you have this spot on your couch that just needs this longer pillow. That is when you would want to actually um, make this twice as, twice as many squares and then you sew it all together. And I just love that you can just, doesn't matter what size machine you have, it doesn't matter what size hoop you have, you can make each one of these designs and make your pillows any size that you want. Now this is, that's just so cool. Now the other thing I do want to show you is what the CD looks like. What are you looking for when you go into the, your quilt shop? This is what you're going to want to find. It's Annika's throw pillows and the CD looks just like this. And you can just ask your local quilt shop for that. Now while you're in there, you're definitely going to want to get a couple other supplies and I'm going to show you what I rec recommend. So first of all, I want to show you that this is the velveteen fabric. Now the reason we chose a velveteen fabric, and it is a Kimber Bell fabric now, is because of the professional look that the, it gives this pillow when it's finished. So the professional look is just, it's that texture, it's that um, beefiness, if you will, of the nice, uh, secure stiffness of the pillow, the fabric. Now the fabric itself is not stiff by any means, but once you add it in, it just looks professional and really beautiful and well done. All right, so a few of the tips would be, definitely, I would pick up some of your medium, this Kimber Bell medium cutaway. The reason I really like this, it is got that medium fill. It's not super heavy, um, but it's got some um, uh, stiffness to it. And it's really important that you have that when you're doing the stitching so it doesn't shrink or pull or tug. It's gonna turn out really beautiful. All right, that's the first thing. I'm gonna set these up here. Um, the next thing would be, it's important to get a this Kimber Bell batting, it's a low loft batting. It's part uh, polyester as well as cotton. Now these, the reason I really like this is the low loft. Really important, you guys. If you do something with a really high loft for this particular project, I'm gonna show you a little bit more on this chevron pillow. Look how beautiful and it nicely it lays. If you have too high of a loft, it's gonna be super puffy, puffy looking, and you don't want that, but it gives it just enough that it has some texture to it. Um, who doesn't love a pillow that has lots of fun textures? I think that's what makes these pillows so amazing. Not to mention the fact you can make them any size. Now you may want to ask yourself, um, pillow forms, we'll talk about that at the end, but we will cover that. But for now, I just wanted to mention how important this fabric is that I would highly recommend using. Okay, 
Um, another cool thing about this fabric is it has a nap to it. So when you are putting these together in your hoop, make sure that you have every one of these naps are going the same direction. And you'll feel it, it goes really soft one way and you can feel like it's kind of going against the grain the other way. So just make sure, it doesn't matter which direction you choose, as long as every time you hoop it, you do it the same. And this is what I like to do in my mind. I'm putting my hoop in my machine and I put it in up. So anytime, I always want my nap to go away from me, okay? So I call it up. So I always make sure my nap goes away from me the same direction that I put my hoop in my machine. I think that's an easy way to remember that. So that's one of the things I wanted to share with you. Now we're gonna talk a lot more about Chanel. Now, I wanted to show you the difference between, I'm gonna flip this back around since that's how I have this set up. I wanted to show you the difference between the um, Chanel and the applique and the look that they have, all right? So right here at the bottom of this pillow, if you can see that, this is one of our beautiful pillows. Now this, I need to make three more, so there's six panels. This is our ombre dot pillow. And what I wanted to share with you is when you're picking and choosing your colors for your pillow, your Annika's throw pillow, you're gonna wanna make sure if you're planning to do Chanel that you do choose a more solid color. Now I know I didn't choose a solid color here because I wanted you to see what it looks like when you do Chanel something that's got a print to it. It doesn't look as clean of a color. That's the most important part is that the, you have a clean looking color, all right? So, well, I'm gonna start out with, you can see the ombre look. I love this ombre look right here. You can see it goes from white to a little bit darker, to a little bit darker, to the darker blue. And it is on a blue background, but I think it's still really pretty. Um, all right, so the bottom, if you look, uh, would be what color they start out at, or if you were to do it as an applique. Um, now, if you were to do all of these as the Chanel, I want you to look at the middle line. So if you see that middle line, the white makes a true white. The light blue that has a very slight, slight um, stripe in it, but yet it really reads a little light blue, okay? Then this is a nice solid, little bit darker blue, and this was a little bit darker blue. Now I had a harder time finding some of the other blues, so I'm like, you know what, this is a great opportunity to share with you what it would look like. This is the applique, and then this is the Chanel you can see quite a difference there, whereas you didn't really see a difference in any of the others. So just keep that in mind. I'm not saying you can't ever use print, but maybe think about that print when you're going to do it. If you were to mix these two colors together, that's the color that I got right here. So it's got a little bit more navy and it's got a little bit lighter, but you mix those two colors together and it actually gave me the perfect color that I wanted for my ombre look. But if you pick something, let's say it's a yellow, and you've got lots of flowers on it, then it's gonna turn more mushy. It's not gonna be yellow. It's gonna be kind of yellow-ish that looks like you've used a marker that's yellow on black and then back on blue and then back you know, to yellow. It's gonna kind of smear those colors, just uh, making you aware of that. All right, the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna show you if you were the process of actually laying down your um, Chanel. So the first step is the actual applique. So if you like your pillow right there when you've got the applique, then great, you're done. But once you do the applique base layer, then you're going to lay the next three layers right side facing up. There's one layer, there's two layers, and three layers. They were stuck together. And they're all facing the same direction. They're facing up, okay? Then it's going to tack it in place right here. Now do note that there are different files. If you're doing an ombre, make sure you pick the ombre dot file or the ombre chevron file um, because it does these three, as you can see, separately from each other. Now if you just pick the regular dot file and it does all six at the same time, that's how you know if you've got the right file uh, that you're using at the current time, all right? So once you've laid those down and you've got that um, the stitching done, I'm gonna show you right here, this is what it's gonna look like before you trim around it. Now, this outside stitch is a basting stitch. 
these inside are not basting they are permanent stitches and then you're going to take your fabric and i love this because if you don't have this kimberbell set of tools with scissors i love this set of tools and scissors it's perfect so what i'm going to do is use these tools today to show you how you would use them to chanel and if you uh, don't have these tools, that's okay. You can still use a pair of scissors, but they've got to cut through three layers of fabric. So I really highly recommend this pair of, or this set of tools. All right, so I'm gonna show using my Kimberbell uh, duckbills. I love these. These are one of my favorite ones because they cut very easily through all three layers without any problem whatsoever. Um, and then you just cut around the outside edge of your basting stitch. You don't want to cut the basting stitch off because if you cut the basting stitch off, it's going to look kind of funny. So the basting stitch is your guide, okay? So once I've cut around the basting stitch, it's going to look like this, all right? Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to unpick the basting stitches. You can use a seam ripper, but dun dun dun, I love these tweezers so the Kimberbell tweezers also have on them a nice sharp edge and you can use those and the cool thing is watch this as I'm going around I can just grab my threads and pull them out of my way so I don't have to go back and forth between different tools it's an all-in-one tool so once I've cut several of these see how you've got these up here I just take it and I pull out my threads it's awesome. That, that's just something I just love this tool for. Once you have those all cut, the next thing you're gonna do, um, and this again is another Kimberbell pair of scissors because it's very, they're very sturdy. Now you're gonna go through and cut down the very middle where it's not stitched, so down the very middle of the three top layers. You're not gonna catch that bottom layer of, um, the the applique you can see it right there so that bottom layer stays only your top three layers get cut okay so that's with the scissors they work great if you happen to have this other tool you're welcome to use it too i think it's called a slash cutter and you can use that as well just make sure you get underneath all three layers <laughs> if i can get it here there we go i think i didn't I missed a step or a stitch. I'm going to go right here. And you can see that works really nicely too. All right. So now that we've got these um, already trimmed, right? I'm going to trim these as well because I've got a great tip to show you how many of you have ever chanel before. And oh my, you make a mess, right? With all those chanel, with all the layers of fabric. All right, I'm going to show you a trick, and it's actually a couple of tricks combined. Um, first thing is you are going to take a spray bottle, a spray bottle of spritz of water, okay? So I'm just spritzing some water right here, and I'm going to do two of these. Um, I guess I didn't need to cut one more spot there before I do this one. We'll just demonstrate with this one, okay? Because it's a little bit darker. It's easier to see. All right, so I've got this down. Now you can you could do it a couple of different ways. Now the first way, uh, you can use a nail file, but because we spritz this with water, it does two things. First of all, you can see how I'm doing it at an angle, almost a 45 degree angle in circles, okay? So I just Chanel this top part with just a simple nail file. But can you see how the water clings this together on your nail file and it makes hardly any mess. I love that. Love that. Okay. And then I'm going to show you, and can you see how it's clinging to the nail file? I love that. With the water, it just sticks it all together because without the water, you have all this static electricity and they are everywhere and it sticks everywhere. So um, once again, I'm going to spritz it and then I'm going to use, um, you can use one of these brushes. They you could use a toothbrush or any kind of brush if you don't have a nail file. Now the key is you don't go directly 90 degrees. You don't go with it up and down. That doesn't work as well as or as quick as a nice little circle. Look how quickly that Chanel's. 
I love that. And the water picks it up in the brush more so than all around. Now, with what's left over, you certainly can use uh, one of these wonderful tape rollers, or if you do have leftover, and I'm gonna shake these off a little bit here, if you do have leftover um, any kind of fusible that has the little glue on the one side, you can just, you can swipe everything right off with the back side of that. Look how clean that made that mat. Uh, I just, I love, this is a great idea. And these are just my leftover scraps. So I hope that you enjoyed those tips today. I did tell you we were gonna talk about the pillow forms. Um, the pillow forms, it does come in the instructions with the different pillow form sizes that you'll need, depending on what pillow you uh, size you choose to make. You can just get those at your uh, local craft or quilt store. Now what I would highly recommend is be creative. Make your pillow whatever shape or whatever size you need for that space, and then you can just make a pillow form if you'd like. Now, what I wonder, what I love about these pillows is it's an envelope style enclosure. Easy for you to pop in and out a pillow. And I hope that you enjoyed our show today. Um, if we have any more questions, please uh, leave them in the comments below and we are happy to answer those questions as quickly as we can. Thank you so much and bye-bye.